Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and in today's video, we're gonna do a detailed review of the inflatable outrigger system that we just finished testing as part of a larger test of our new pedal drive skin on frame outrigger canoe system. Now, as always, if you have no idea what I'm talking about with the pedal drive canoe, make sure you check out the link on the screen right now. That's gonna take you to a video that talks all about the design history of this particular watercraft and if you don't know who I am, because you're new here, once again, my name is Brian. I've been building skin on frame boats for over 20 years. I offer online video courses and plan sets for how to build skin on frame kayaks and canoes. Also, I just want to remind you that this is the third video in this series. I split this into three parts because this particular boat can be used as a normal canoe. It can be used as a pedal drive canoe, and it can also be used as an outrigger canoe. So it just made more sense to cover each function independently rather than make one gigantic video. So in this video, we're just gonna be talking about the outrigger system, how it performed on the water, how it held up to some pretty extreme abuse, and finally, what I'm gonna be changing in the next version. Okay, so starting out with the trip that we just finished, basically I needed a testing ground where I could get as many days on the water in the shortest possible amount of time. And the easiest way to do that was to drive down to Baja, California, where we could basically load the Jeep up with supplies, find a beach somewhere, and then camp out for a week, testing the boat in a variety of different conditions. Most of the time we just used this in pedal drive outrigger mode with two people on board, although there were times where we set it up as a normal canoe or a pedal canoe without the outrigger, and occasionally I just used it as a solo boat. So overall, we were down there for four and a half months. We went for about 90 trips out on the water or about 250 hours. Now, before we dive into the details here, I just wanna clarify that this was not designed to be the best possible performing outrigger but rather a reasonable performing outrigger that's lightweight, compact, and easy to assemble. Basically, this is a way to get a little bit more stability for fishing or scuba diving or photography or whatever without compromising the existing functionality of the canoe. Obviously, you could get much better outrigger performance using different materials on the outrigger, not to mention a dedicated outrigger canoe shape. Also, I just wanna mention that I'm gonna be giving some really detailed views of the outrigger attachments, but keep in mind that even though the concept is fairly simple, every single part of this system, including the canoe that it's attached to, is something that we've been working on for over five years. The reason I mention that is because if you try to duplicate this just based on what you're seeing in this video, there is a high probability that you could experience a catastrophic failure on the water, which depending on the situation, could be life-threatening. Okay, so what I wanna do here is I'm gonna stop the camera for a few minutes and I'm gonna take apart the outrigger setup that you see behind me, and then we're gonna rebuild it together, talking about each piece as we put it back together. And at the end, I'm gonna do a wrap up and talk about how I felt about the system as a whole and where we're gonna be going next in the design process. All right, so before we put together the outrigger system, you can see that I've added this big yellow float to the opposite side of the canoe where the outrigger is gonna be. And this isn't necessary for the function of the outrigger, but it is very necessary if you want to be able to self-rescue an outrigger canoe. Because if you don't have this float on the inside of the canoe and you tip the outrigger over, there's no way you're gonna be able to get the water out of the boat. And I'm not gonna go into the function of this too much. I made a totally separate video for how to use this to get the water out of the outrigger canoe. I'll put a link up on the screen for that right now. But just to give you the specifications, on this. This is five feet long, it's eight and a half inches in diameter, and I've got it hooked on with two six foot long cam straps. These are commonly sold as boat rollers, so if you have a really heavy boat, you can roll it up the beach with a few of these, but really it's nothing more than a repurposed heavy duty inflatable fender. And so this is what I currently use for flotation on both sides of a canoe if I need a lot of flotation, if it's just a regular canoe without an outrigger, or one side of a canoe if I'm going out with the outrigger, which we're gonna build right now. 
Now, moving on to the outrigger attachment itself, what you're looking at here is a wear plate with a couple pad eyes with a bungee loop strung between them. And this originally started out as a self-rescue system for a pack canoe to kind of mimic the bungee loops on the back of a kayak deck and then slowly evolved into a system I've been using for years now to catamaran two canoes side by side, which now has evolved into a system you can use to set up an outrigger. So to go ahead and set this up for real, all I've got to do is take the board, slide it under one side, slide it under the other side, put the bungee between the pegs, and that's it. This whole thing is ready to go. And like I said in the intro, this is why I like this system because it is vastly faster to configure than any other type of traditional catamaran or outrigger connection. So you can see here, this is pretty darn stiff, but it's just flexible enough that when you combine it with the overall flexibility of a skin boat, if you end up putting a lot of stress on it, it's not going to tear itself apart. Now, as far as how these attachments performed on the trip, this was the most wear to date that I've been able to put on this system. This saw at least 250 hours on the water, and I have to say I'm really impressed with the results. This new bungee that we were able to source, this is a heavy duty marine grade bungee. It's got a really thick polyester sheath, and I thought for sure that with that much UV exposure, I was gonna have to re-rig this at least once or twice during the trip. And honestly, the wear is so minimal on this that I would use this for another season on the water before I felt like I needed to re-rig it. So that's really good news because we've been experimenting with tons and tons of different bungee over the years, and it was good to find something that was actually strong enough for really hard long-term use. Now, the boards themselves actually wore down a little bit on the underside here and here. This is what that looks like from the underside. It's not horrible, but you can definitely see where this bumping into the edge of the pad eyes is starting to chew up the wood. And this is actually one of the reasons that I deliberately use nylon pad eyes for this, because I find that the wear on the plastic and the wear on the wood is about equivalent, and I don't have a really sharp steel pad eye just jamming into the edge of this right here. So unfortunately, as far as I can tell, this is just going to be part of this system. Over time, your catamaran boards are going to wear down a little bit, and then eventually you're going to have to replace them. But these are really quick and easy and cheap to make, so it's not really a big deal. And you could probably use this for another three or four years before before it became an actual problem. Now, I should mention that something else I did on this trip is I coated these with five layers of the Total Boat water-based polyurethane, just like I did on everything else that had polyurethane on this boat, except for the skin itself. And I'm pretty happy with the wear characteristics of this material. I mean, obviously, if you've got constant rubbing or abrasion, it's gonna wear off. But other than that, these boards were sitting out in direct sunlight in Mexico for four and a half months and it still looks really good. I don't even feel like I need to recoat these right now. I would probably wait another season. So it's not the most beautiful varnish, but it's relatively non-toxic. It's super quick to apply and it seems to hold up pretty good. Now, before we move on to the outrigger, I just want to point out that at the other end of the canoe, I have two sets of outrigger board attachments. And the reason for that is if we're using this in tandem mode, obviously you want to have the board behind the seat back here, but that's actually a pretty wide spread between the outrigger boards. And so if I was using this in solo mode, where I would move the rudder to the other end of the canoe, and then I would sit in the front seat facing backwards. In that case, I like to be able to move that outrigger board a little bit closer closer to the center of the canoe. I just feel like it gives you a little bit better geometry there. All right, so taking a look at the inflatable outrigger, I'm just gonna go ahead and roll this out here. I'm gonna go ahead and pump it up with my trusty K-pump. All right, so you can see it takes about two minutes to fully inflate this. All right, so to put this whole thing together, we're gonna to need a couple more things. One of them is this specially shaped little foam block right here, and then I'm gonna need a four foot cam strap. So go ahead and start a timer here again, just so we can see how long this takes. So I'm gonna take the block, and I'm gonna slide it under here. And then I'm gonna take this cam strap and I'm gonna slide it through this strap eye right here. And the purpose of this is just to keep the whole thing from sliding off the edge of the board. 
I'm going to come down through the D-ring down here, make sure that everything stays nice and straight, and then I'm going to come up and over in an X pattern, down through the other D-ring, and then up and over, and then I'm going to thread the end through the buckle on this cam strap, and I'm going to crank this down nice and tight. Okay. So it looks like that took me 45 seconds to get that done. And this is what that looks like from a different angle. You can see the whole thing is super solid, but it's also really quick to put together. The important thing here is that there's no twists in these straps because I'm counting on these straps right here to grab the edges of this foam block so it doesn't accidentally slide out of there. Now, you can also see that I've got quite a bit of board hanging over the edge of the float right here. I don't think you need quite this much, but it's good to have a little bit hanging over just in case this thing shifts a little bit. Also, you want that to be able to hook a rope onto in case you need to flip this back over if the boat capsizes. So this is what this looks like fully rigged. It only took me about five minutes to set this up, although obviously there's more stuff you need to do if you're actually heading out on the water. So in our experience, once we got used to setting this up, it only took us about 15 minutes from when we were unstrapping this on top of the Jeep to when we were actually paddling away. Now, as far as the longitudinal spacing of the outrigger boards, basically these need to be positioned so they're not interfering with the pedal drive or the seating location. So in the rear, I've got the rear catamaran board behind the seat. And in the front, I've got it in front of the seat far enough so the person in the front seat can sit facing forward or facing backwards. Now, speaking of this front sitting position, something really useful that we found out kind of by accident was that in addition to just sitting in the canoe seat, you can also sit up on the outrigger board, which was really nice for fishing because it gave me a little bit more swing room for my cast. Also, I could see down into the water a little bit better. Also, if I wanted to help paddle the canoe to give us a little bit more propulsion, there's enough room for me to reach over, at least on this side right here, and take some strokes. And then also, if I'm sitting here facing backwards, the back of this seat here makes a perfect little tray for me to organize my fishing gear or potentially make some lunch. So just a nice little bonus of versatility there that we hadn't counted on. Now, as long as we're talking about the position of these outrigger boards, I just want to mention that even though this whole setup works really well with the pedal drive system, it's not going to work as well just with normal canoe paddling because obviously, at least in tandem mode, the paddles are going to run into the outrigger board. And it's not really practical in a tandem to move these outrigger boards further out because one, the float tube would have to be way too long, and two, it wouldn't have enough support towards the center. And that's not to say that you can't paddle it like this. And in fact, our emergency propulsion, in case something happens to the pedal drive, is we do have two normal canoe paddles and if you've got a rudder, you can always paddle on the opposite side over here where you don't have that interference and just use the rudder to steer. But it doesn't work really well and definitely it wouldn't be practical if you were just out paddling without the pedal drive. So if you're thinking about a tandem canoe without a pedal drive, I don't think this would be a good solution for you. However, if you were thinking about a solo canoe, even without the pedal drive, you don't have that same interference concern because you can center the paddler between the outrigger boards and then you can take a full stroke without any issues. Now, as far as the spacing between the float and the canoe, the farther out you've got this float, obviously the more stable it's gonna be, but the more it's gonna drag and that's gonna really affect your steering. Now, on the other hand, if you push it up against the boat, you're not going to have as much issues with steering, but it's also not going to give you as much stability. So it was all about trying to find a balance there. And originally I didn't have a keeper on these straps, so I could slide this whole thing around a little bit one way and the other until I found what I thought was about the right balance. And I'm pretty happy with where I have it right now. It's far enough away from the canoe that you can take a canoe stroke with the exception of the end of the stroke, which obviously hits the catamaran board in double mode, but not in solo mode. But other than that, you can take a full canoe stroke and you're not interfering out here. And then also something that we didn't realize that ended up being really useful is you wanna make sure that this is close enough. So if you need to, 
you can actually stand on this or push off of this when you're getting back into the canoe to do a self rescue or if you need to lean out and add a little bit of air to the outrigger. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the geometry here. I'm gonna be keeping this almost exactly like it is, but what I am gonna be making some changes to is this float. Like I said in the introduction, the goal here wasn't to try to create the best performing outrigger. It was to create a reasonable performing outrigger that was as quick and as easy and as lightweight to use as possible. And by those metrics, I think we succeeded, but I do think that there's room for improvement. So just to give you the basic specs on this, this particular outrigger is 14 feet long, it's nine and a half inches in diameter, and the distance between the point on the nose and the full diameter right here is 22 inches. Which brings me to the first thing I wanna change about this, and that is this nose is sticking out too far and it's too blunt, and both those things means that it tends to push into the water instead of riding up over the water, which creates unnecessary drag. So just to give you an idea, I feel like this particular outrigger slows the boat down by about a half a mile per hour. And no matter what we do to the outrigger, it's not gonna change that much, but I'm hoping to change that to maybe a third of a mile per hour as opposed to half a mile per hour. And a big part of that is on the next generation, I'm going to bring this nose back a little bit and I'm gonna extend this angle pretty far back. And then also, I think I wanna to try to reduce the diameter of this a little bit. Paddling next to this thing for four and a half months, it just seemed a little bit oversized and kind of ugly. So I think on the next version, I'm not gonna be able to bring this down too much because that would compromise the overall stability of the outrigger tube, especially given the distance between the attachment points. But I do think I can reduce it a little bit and just make the whole thing look a little bit more elegant and maybe bringing it back a little bit will give it a little less wetted surface as well. I don't know if it's gonna change the windage that much, but hopefully it brings the windage down a little bit and so we get a little bit better rudder response as well. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for the details of this outrigger system. As far as how I feel about this overall, I feel like we did a pretty good job of meeting the design goal. It's a decent performing outrigger that is lightweight, it's compact, it's quick to set up, and it works really well with our pedal drive system. Something like this is gonna be ideal for situations where you want the option of extra stability, but you don't wanna compromise the normal performance of your canoe. It's probably not gonna be a great fit for non-pedal drive tandems for the reasons we talked about, unless you just wanna use it as a swim platform, although it might have limited application on a dedicated solo canoe. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is exactly how much this whole system weighs. The way that I have this set up right now, the outrigger boards and the outrigger together weighs about 19 pounds. Although on the next generation, I'm hoping to get that down to about 15 pounds, although I don't think it's ever gonna be much lighter than that. I also wanna mention that something like this is only gonna be comfortable in up to about 15 miles per hour of wind with two foot wind waves. Anything more than that, and just like any normal canoe, you're gonna to start to experience challenges with steering, not to mention just taking waves over the side of the boat. Now, as far as what's next in the design process, I've got a whole bunch of other design projects that I've got to get through over the summer, but hopefully if I can get that stuff done in time, I would like to come back and build another improved version of this exact same canoe and maybe even take it back down to Baja. So stay tuned for that. Also, if you're interested in building one of our canoes, the information for how to set up the gunnel attachments and the outrigger boards is already included in the plans. Finally here, I just want to remind you that if you didn't check out the first two videos in this series, that's where you're going to find the information about the canoe itself and the pedal drive system that I didn't cover today. And if you want to see this boat in action, make sure you check out the fishing series that we shot when we were down in Baja, especially if you're a fisherman, I think you're going to find them highly entertaining. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. As usual, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Also, click that notification bell if you wanna stay up to date with all my crazy skin on frame design projects. And as always, you can find us on our website, capefalconkayaks.com, where we have skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. 
You can also find us on Instagram, at Cape Falcon Builds, where we post photos and videos of whatever we're working on in the shop or whatever we're testing out on the water. And you can find that same information on the Cape Falcon Kayak Facebook page as well. Okay, that's it for now. Take care, be safe on the water, and have fun building your skin boat.